In this problem, we're looking to find the extreme values that would be the highest maximum or the lowest minimum values uh, for this function. If we were to look for the x, y, and z's, uh, what would create the lowest and what would create the maximum values for that? But we're also subject to these rules, and so we kind of have to deal with that. In order to make this possible, we're going to have to realize that um, we have three different equations. We kind of have one, two, and three. And we want to try to basically set these three things uh, equal to each other to be able to find what x, y, z values work for them. Um, but we want to make sure that we can do that properly. So let's let's say that they were all coming in towards a certain spot, you know, and they're all going to kind of converge towards this one point right here. So that point and that one point, all of them are exactly the same. They're parallel and all that good stuff. Um, we're going to say that the gradient of f is equal to uh, the gradient of g, which would potentially be that one, um, times some kind of constant, so we could either flip it or whatever. But the idea is that these two things are the same, but uh, they might have different like lengths. And then um, if we wanted to have three or more, then we just start adding, uh, adding more. So we can just go like that plus, you know, h, and then we'll have to call it some other kind of constant. So if we were to rearrange this equation, we can get uh, this. Uh, g lambda minus delta h mu would be equal to zero. So we're going to kind of um, rearrange this thing by calling it a Lagrange. We're going to say x, y, z, and then we're going to call it, we've got two different ones. This is going to be a, 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 a lambda, and this one's going to be the mu multiple. So we're going to plug that in here. Uh, lambda and mu. We've got five different variables to work with, and we're just going to create this thing. So um, you know, uh, 2x minus 3y plus z, that's going to be your f of x. And we're going to subtract the lambda times g, which is this one, so x squared plus y squared, uh, and then we're going to subtract 1. And then uh, over here, we're going to add, um, add the next thing, or it's actually subtracting it. So uh, mu times this one, which is going to be y squared plus z squared plus actually minus one minuses and pluses are a little bit difficult to keep track of as usual but um this is our lagrange which is supposed to be equal to zero but we're also going to take now that we didn't have the gradients yet this is just the regular old f g and h so now we're going to take the gradients in order to do that we just take the derivative partial derivatives in terms of x across this which is going to be two minus 2 lambda x, um, and that's going to be equal to 0. And then we've got the partial uh, y is going to be negative 3 minus 2y lambda minus 2y mu, which is equal to 0. And then the partial of z is 1 minus to z mu equal to zero. Now we can rearrange these equations. So we could say two equals two lambda x, therefore x equals one over lambda. And then here we could say two z mu equals one. So z equals one over two mu. And over here, we kind of have like negative 2y times x minus, or is it lambda minus mu, that's equal to 3. So like y would be equal to like um, negative 3 over 2, uh, and then we could say lambda minus mu. Mm, that could work. So now, Let's go ahead and just plug these into here. We'll say that um, it's not it's not x. We count with these. Just give a little box so we can't remember where we are here. This is squared, so it's one over lambda squared plus y squared equals one. And on this one, it would be we'll use that one. So y squared plus one over four mu squared equals one. And uh, we could see that these things are basically just going to be equal to each other. 1 over lambda squared equals 1 over 4 mu squared. 
So these two things are equal. Lambda squared equals four mu squared. And so now we kind of get lambda is equal to plus or minus two mu. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and use this, third e this equation here because we could say that y is equal to negative three over two, and then we would have uh, mu, um, we don't know whether it's plus or minus, but um, we'll just assume that it is minus, I guess, but I'll make this positive, it might be a little easier. So minus two mu minus mu, um, lead us towards y is being equal to, uh, see this would be minus 3, so this would be 1 over 2 mu. Okay, and then that we can, um, we can plug into uh, perhaps this again, or maybe this one, because yeah, we could solve for mu now by using z's and y's. So let's go ahead and do that over here. Um, so 1 over 4 mu squared e uh, plus 1 over 4 mu squared <laughs> equals 1. That means that 2 over 4 mu squared equals 1, which means that 4 mu squared equals 2. And so mu squared equals 1 half, and mu equals plus or minus 1 over square root of 2. All right. Well, we also know that mu is equal to uh, twice as much of the lambda. Uh, mu, mu, well, mu and lambda are kind of like that. So let's just go ahead and uh, put this in there. We'll have lambda is going to be equal to... Um, well, 2 over the square root of 2? Um, yeah. Okay. That would work. Um, and it's plus or minus. Because, well, we're going to have to deal with that. So, great. <laughs> We've got some answers. Uh, we want to find x, y's, and z values now, so let's just plug in x over here. Um, yeah, so x is equal to 1 over lambda, and lambda is this. So technically, it's just square root of 2 over 2, and that would be plus or minus square root of 2 over 2, which is the same thing as 1 over square root of 2. So it's plus or minus 1 over square root of 2. Those things are the same. Now for z, we could find 1 over 2 mu. 1 over 2 mu is this. Um, so it's like 1 divided by 2 divided by the square root of 2, which would be square root of 2 over 2. So it's the same thing as x. So it's plus or minus square root of 2 over 2, which is the same thing as plus or minus 1 over square root of 2. Just kind of doing a little bit of this math in my head. For y, um, we can use this, 1 over 2 mu, which is not the same thing as z. So, yeah, we'll find that these two are actually the same. And so there you go. Uh, apparently, x, y, and z are all going to be kind of the same. They're all plus or minus square root of 2 over 2, or 1 over the square root of 2. Those are the values that would potentially make this maybe maximum or minimum. We don't know which ones. There's so many combinations. In fact, if we were to try to plug these all in, it would be like, I don't know, 18 different combinations or something like that, right? But we're not going to really do that. We're going to kind of use a little logic here. Let's think about this. So we have 2x minus 3y plus z. If we want this to be maximum, that would probably be the highest uh, positive value. So we would want some kind of positive x, some kind of negative y, which would make this positive, and then some kind of positive z. If we can achieve that, then this is going to be a maximum, because like you can't get higher than 
positive, positive, positive. So let's just say x could be, um, let's see if I have any room down here. The final answers here is that basically x is going to be equal to the positive version. So that would be 1 over square root of 2. y would be equal to the negative version. So that would be negative 1 over square root of 2. And z would be equal to, again, the positive. So this is our maximum value. And we could try to plug it in here to see what number we would get. And for the minimum value, we would just say kind of the opposite. We want the highest negative value. In order to do that, let's just switch these around. We'll make this the negative x. We'll make that a negative z, and we'll make that a positive y, so that we get negative, 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 and then that way we'll be at the minimum point. So it's going to be x equals negative 1 over square root of 2, y equals positive 1 over square root of 2, and z equals negative 1 over square root of 2. And there we go. We have found our maximum and minimum points. Um, then we would just have to plug them in there to find the values, but we, we don't really have enough room to do that. Anyway, crazy.